No, this is so weird and so awkward. Oh my god. <laughs> this is Oliver, by the way. We call him Molly. I guess welcome back to my channel. This feels very weird. It's been a very long time. Hot minute. I think it's been like four years since I <laughs> filmed a video, put a video out. But for some reason this year, I've decided why not come back, give this all a go. I'm going to be trying something different that I've not done before. I've decided that I'm going to do a bit of a reading vlog. The whole point of why I'm doing this is that, is that I thought I would do a reading vlog of Bear by Prince Harry. I feel like I don't need to explain what this book's about, but it is his biography, memoir, and I've just decided I want to read it because I don't really care about the royal family, but I'm here for the tea that he's been spilling. I have to go to the shops and buy it. It is the 11th of January here today. Um, so it has only been released in Australia today because it was coming out in the 10th everywhere else. I don't really know what's gonna happen, but yeah, I'm gonna head to Big W and pick up this book now. So enjoy that footage, I guess. <laughs> Alrighty, so I have just gotten back from my walk, as you would have seen from the clips. I have the spare. So, that is the cover. And then a picture of him on the back. And let's see what, oh okay, so it's just black, plain. I love the smell of new books, they smell fantastic. Okay, so then there's a bit of a blurb, and then just a blurb about him at the back. It's quite a thick book. Okay, so the acknowledgement pages go to page 410. Okay, but the actual thing itself is 407 pages. So do kind of want to start reading it today and just see how everything goes. And oh, that's cute. He's um, dedicated it for Meg and Archie and Lily. And of course their mother. That's sweet. I'm going to go downstairs where I can put the aircon on, sit on my couch, get comfortable. And I'm going to start reading this. And I'll just, I guess, check in with my thoughts and opinions when I get through it. Just see what I think. So I'll um, check in with you guys later. Okay, so like I haven't even finished the first page. Um, but I really like how it's written, his writing style. That's really interesting. And so basically he's finding out that his grandfather um, has passed away. That's how the book's this memoir starts, so that's interesting. I mean, keep reading, but I'm hooked so far. Ooh, I'm only on the second page, but he's talking about how without his grandpa, like his grandpa was the biggest advocate for his mum and dad getting together. And he's like, but for him, I wouldn't be here. Neither would my older brother. And then he says, then again, maybe our mother would be here if she hadn't married Pa. Fuck me. It's a damn good point though. If she wasn't Princess Diana, like no one would have given a fuck about her and she probably wouldn't have been in that tunnel and crashed. It's not supposed to be making me evaluate things on page two. <laughs> Harold. He's no longer Harry, he's just Harold. <laughs> his alarming boldness. I I kind of love that. So he's meeting to have like a private chat with his father and his brother after his grandfather's funeral and they basically admit to him that they don't know why he left the UK and he's like come to the realization that maybe they didn't actually know and it was and so part will eat world here you go and then it goes to part one and then there's like a cute picture with him and his mum so yeah I'm enjoying this now but yeah I guess I'll check back in later but this is more enjoyable than I think I was expecting it to be talking about how his brother Will was the heir whereas he was a spare and he said this wasn't merely how the press referred to it this was a shorthand often used by pa and mummy and grandpa and even granny so their his entire family referred to him and his brother as the heir and the spare that's just messed up were people really thinking like that they're really like oh my god i was brought into the world in case something happened to willie i was summoned to provide backup distraction diversion if necessary a spare part kidney perhaps blood transfusion speck of bone marrow this was all made explicitly clear to me from the start of life's journey and regularly reinforced thereafter i'd be bailing from this family too fuck that i'm just reading something that's just not even like mildly disturbing, it's just incredibly disturbing. Basically, a journalist found out that Harry was just sort of doing drugs. They're gonna 
do this story that he's basically this full-on like druggie and harry was like oh yeah but my dad's gonna get on top of this and you know put it put put a stop to it essentially because i'm i'm just doing teenage fun stuff like i'm not a drug addict this is insane and he's literally told no they're not gonna do that they're gonna let the story run pretty much they're gonna throw harry under the bus because it's gonna make his dad look better because he's now a single father raising a drug adult child sorry if that's legit like i don't i don't remember i was born in 93 i don't know what the tabloids were saying at this time about him i do know that he was in the tabloids quite a lot if this is legit that they were literally like let's throw i guess 15 or something we're gonna throw a 15 year old under the bus because it's gonna make his dad look better. That's disturbing, that's not okay. I've never been a huge supporter of Prince Charles. This book is kind of just reinforcing my previous opinions of he's a piece of shit. Sorry, don't give a fuck who you are. You don't do that to your child to make yourself look better. I don't care that somebody else came up with the idea, you still approved it. That's bullshit, you protect your kid. Anyway, I'm gonna keep reading this bullshit. I'm just coming back to pick up a spare again and I have finished part one. But basically I did really enjoy part one. It focused a lot on death and grief and how just numb he was um, and just sort of, you know, all of that stuff and leading up to going into the, the army and all of that jazz. So I have since started part two, just very briefly, haven't read much. I don't think I'm going to enjoy this section as much just because it does... I think focus a lot on his time in the army. I just don't find that stuff interesting. I think I'm gonna enjoy part one more than um, potentially part two, but I'm really excited for part three because I read ahead because I wanted to know when Meghan Markle came into things and it's like page 260 something. So I'm only up to like page 100 and yeah. So I'm on a page 140. So I still have like 120 pages or 220 pages before she comes into it. I'm a little bit surprised by the amount of information he's giving about like his training. I don't know what the general public is supposed to know about like training in the military and stuff like that, but some of it I'm reading it and I'm going, are you allowed to tell us this? I don't think we should really know this stuff. So that's kind of the only moment where I've kind of had like a, a negative sort of thought about something that he's put in the book. My plan is is just to get through part two as quickly as possible. I will check in with you guys at some other point. I finished part two of a Spare last night. I didn't find it very interesting. I've already said that, but I just, I didn't really care for it. William got married. I started to skim some of it because I just didn't care. To part three, which is the final part, Megan comes into this one. So I think this is gonna be the most interesting part, but just wanted to say part one was definitely better than part two. Basically, you're just getting this overarching theme that he just wanted out. <laughs> and for a while. And I think she gave him a really great excuse to get out of the royal family from what I've read, but all he wanted to do was go to war, leave England, get away from the press. We're uh, close to the end and then I can sort of just close this whole thing off with some thoughts, but yeah, I will keep you guys updated. I have finished Spare by Prince Harry. I'm still trying to get like all my thoughts underway because this is really quite a polarizing topic and book. I don't think the hate that Megan gets is warranted. What did she do? She fell in love and they left the royal family and now they're just talking about their experiences which just happened to be negative. People just hate her. I think she's great. I don't understand the hate. Like, I don't think she's done anything wrong. This book has gotten a lot of criticisms for him being whiny and complaining. I can see where they're coming from. However, I think he's justified to complain. A hundred percent. He was born into this family that unfortunately comes with a high level of scrutiny and you are in the public domain. However, he did not choose to be born into this family. He had no say in that. He has hated the fact that his entire life has been put out on the world stage. Literally since the day he was born, people have been taking photographs of him. They literally go on family holidays and he'd have to stand there and have people take photographs of him so he could then just go and have his holiday. That's not normal, that's not a case. It's, it's, it's weird. Can we not normalize that? Because it ain't normal. I think his justifications to complain are completely warranted. And I know a lot of it stems from them being like, they just wanted privacy, you know, but now they're coming out and saying all these things. And it's like, they're saying all these things because they're now free to. When they were a part of um, the institution, the royal family, they weren't allowed to say anything. They're, they always came from a place of just no comment. And it's like, okay, that's fair enough, but they're not adapting with modern times. You can't just maintain a stance of no comment in modern day society. Like, it, it, it doesn't work at all and it hasn't worked. Clearly they're like exhibit A. Based on this information solely at hand and obviously 
we only have Harry's side of events. We will never get the royal family side of things, but they suck as a family. His mum died when he was like, what, 13 or something? And there's like pretty much no support offered to him whatsoever. He may just not remember it and that might be why. Still messed up, not okay. He clearly was acting out multiple times. Still no support offered to him whatsoever. And I just think that it was such a toxic, shitty situation for him that he left. And I don't blame him whatsoever. I think he made the right decision entirely. And everyone has the nerve to turn around and tell them that they can't criticize their family. I say criticize away. Your family suck. And I think the way that they treated Harry and Meghan has done themselves no favors because these two are not gonna go quietly. And Meghan has shown herself to be a woman who stands up for herself. And I think that's part of the reason why people don't like her because she didn't conform to whatever fucked up societal norms and pressures and ideals that people had for what a wife of a prince should be. And if Megan comes out with a memoir that's kind of being rumored at the moment, I will buy that and read that too, because I think it'll be very interesting. She's a very intelligent woman. And the fact that everybody is like, it's her fault, she's the reason all of this happened. I think that regardless of who Harry was married to, if that woman had faced the level of hate and criticism and just absolute bullshit that Megan was, I think he would have walked regardless because I think he was at the point where he was just waiting for a good enough reason to walk away from the royal family. And I think it could have been any woman that he'd fallen in love with, he would have done it. He would have walked through this whole part one, death, grief, just not coping with anything, wanting to get out, hating the press. Part two, hating the press and wanting to escape to war. He wanted to go to war to get away from Britain because he wanted to escape his life and his family in the press. Like I said, don't think it mattered who he married. He would have gotten out had the same thing happened. It's not her. It is literally the press and the lack of support from his family. The rest of it, why shouldn't he be allowed to speak up and say, hey, I have a toxic family and they treated me like shit. Everyone else in society does that. We go, good on you. He did it and it's about the royal family and that's when people are mad. The double standards are interesting. I think he has every right to tell his story. I felt part three was better than part two. Part two is my least favorite part. I don't care about the military stuff whatsoever. I've said a hundred times, didn't find it interesting. The stuff with Megan, like, it wasn't that revealing. I don't feel like we got that many juicy things as everyone was making out. Also, I'm very, in not intrigued, but irritated, I think is a better word. But they've literally taken excerpts from like part one, part two, part three, and smashed them together to make it seem like this really revealing thing has happened. And it's like, none of those like three sentences relate to one another actually in the book. It's like people are once again just trying to make stories out of nothing. This wasn't life changing for me. It was, it was an interesting read. I learned some things about a particular body part that I never needed to know about, that nobody needed to know about. There were multiple paragraphs on a problem he was having. I just was reading that last night going, what the fuck? Can we talk about something else? I don't need to know about you potentially thinking you have frostbite down there. But I loved part one. I thought that was great. I still think the biggest criticism about his dad is that he's just emotionally distant and he just wasn't there for him, which is the exact same criticism that his father made about his parents. So they've got no leg to stand on. I thought it was interesting when, you know, the royal family would like trade stories of other members of the royal family to the press to stop a particular story about that member of the royal family running, which I think is just a dog act if that's the truth. Like they're literally throwing their children, their parents, grandparents, cousins, aunties, uncles, sisters, brothers, cousins, whoever, nieces, nephews under the bus to save their own skin. And I just think that says a lot about them as people if that's the case. He doesn't seem to like Camilla very much. I'm not her biggest fan either. I just don't like King Charles and Camilla. There's just something about the two of them that I just don't like. And some of the things you learn about them in the book, I'm just like, mm -hmm. I don't, I will never know if the things in this book are true or not for the most part, but the, some of the comments that were made about them, I'm like, you know what? I believe it. And I don't think it was that bad about William and Kate. It just really highlighted a sibling rivalry. And I think that for the most part, Harry and Meghan, there would be jealousy of William and Kate and also vice versa that William and Kate are jealous of Meghan and Harry. Also the comments that William made about therapy and thinking that Harry's being brainwashed because he no longer wants to be a part of the royal family and it's like, no, I think the therapist helped him realize that getting out of the royal family was a good idea for him. And you know what? Good job, therapist. It was interesting. I'm gonna say it was interesting. I think he was quite within his right to put out this book. I don't think it says anything too horrible about the royal family as everyone's making it out to be. The royal family are not above criticism. I don't think there was anything too shocking except for the fact that he really wanted to leave a long time ago. And that stupid bridesmaid thing is like the dumbest thing I've 
ever had to read. Why was anyone crying about it is my question at all. But I did enjoy it. If you want to read it, I say pick it up. It's only 400 pages of your life. It's not that deep. It's not that bad. It's not that revealing. It's not half as bad as everyone's making it out to be. I didn't find him whiny. I know some people found that he was. Like I said, I think it was justified complaining on his behalf. If you want to pick it up or if you've read it and you've got some thoughts, let me know down below. I don't want any like hate comments about anybody in my comments. So please don't do that. But if you did enjoy it, please let me know and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.